All right, we are now live. Celtics Live post game presented by Guy Boston Sports. I am Ev. If you are watching live on Twitter or on Periscope, make sure you're staying in the conversation with the comments here. If you're going to watch the next day on YouTube, the Guy Boston Sports YouTube channel, make sure you're dropping a comment down below and letting me know what you thought of that game. But you know what? That game was great. That was a. I like that the Nets are kind of a good team now, and I use that term loosely, like, they're better than they have been in the past. I like that because I do like us. These Brooklyn Mondays, the little narrative we got going, Brooklyn Mondays, they've turned into some uh, some decent games. So that's a positive right there. But right off the bat, we can talk about Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart with 21 points, 7 assists, and 5 steals. But who cares about the points, steals, or rebounds, or assists, whatever he got. How about him making four threes? I think he had, I want to say, four in the first half. I could be wrong about that. I think he had four in the first half. So that's a little, yeah. like, all right. He did that before one of these games that he had a bunch in the first half, and then he didn't even hit a single one in the second half. But anyways, I don't care. Mark Smart is 4 of 10 from 3. If he's going to shoot 40% from 3, I'm fine with him taking as many as he wants because you know what? He does so, so much on the defensive side of the floor and everywhere else that I don't really care if Marcus Smart isn't going to, uh, you know, I don't really care if Marcus Smart's not going to make, 45 percent of his threes if he's gonna sit at 40 percent by all means sign me the hell up Marcus Smart 21 points seven assists five steals it's great to see Jalen Brown was right behind him Jalen Brown went three of five from three but you know I'm more impressed when Jalen Brown gets to the rack so he took 16 shots only five of those were threes that's what I like to see out of Jalen Brown that's what I like to see I don't I'm not a huge fan of Jalen Brown shooting these threes even if he's gonna make three of five you know if that's going to happen every night, then I'll take it. But I just don't believe that's something that'll happen every single night. But if he's going to shoot 16 shots and only five of those are going to be a three, I'm okay with that. Jalen Brown with 21 points, six rebounds. And then Al Horford and Terry Rozier were the two. They kind of tied on my on my uh, top players here. Al Horford just filled up the stat sheet. You want to talk about a stat sheet stuffer? You want to talk about a stat sheet stuffer? Al Al Horford, 14 points, 11 rebounds, 6 blocks, 5 assists. Aggressive Al, let's go, brother. Aggressive Al, 14 points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists, 5, five or 6 blocks, 5 assists. That is crazy. That's, I mean, that's playoff Al coming out right now. Um, Tommy, what's going on, man? Thanks for checking in. Uh, we, can, we can talk uh, Terry Rozier, too, because Terry only had, I think, 3 points at the half. Finished with 14, and he actually filled up the stat sheet, too, with seven rebounds and seven assists. So, uh, my man Terry's doing his job out there. Now, and uh, Michael, you're bringing it up in the chat here. Now it's time to talk about Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward had, I think he had two points. I think he finished with two tonight with just that dunk. 21 minutes of play and two points. That's now, I think, I want to say 43 minutes and four points. 43 minutes and four points in his last 43 minutes, or two games. That type of, that's just not going to fly. You guys already know. I, I put out the article on GuyBossonSports.com a couple days ago that I just, I'm not going to trade Gordon Hayward. I don't want to trade Gordon Hayward. But, I mean, two points a game, that is, that is as bad as it gets. Just like him scoring two, just like him scoring two against the, against the Warriors, him scoring two against the Nets is just as bad. I said in that article, I said it's not going to get any worse than this. I don't know. I don't know, man. I still don't want to trade him, and I'll get into that in a second. I still don't want to trade Gordon Hayward because I just don't see the benefit in trading him. I know. People have brought it up to me. Hey, like, what's? why don't we do this, this, this? Sure, there is some benefits if you can get someone to take him. Who wants Gordon Hayward right now? But we'll get into that in a second. But Gordon Hayward, two points on 20-plus minutes of play. There is something still effed up. Something still messed up in that ankle, in his mind. Something, because you know what? Even a half, even a fraction of what Gordon Hayward was isn't scoring two points. He's just as productive as if he wasn't playing as last year in these last couple games. They needed him against the Warriors. So, hey, what do you know? Gordon Hayward's probably going to go off, right? In the next game when he was absent against the Warriors. Didn't. Not even close. Um, and, you know... This I almost put a video out on Twitter, too, like Gordon Hayward's about to go off. This is his fucking game. Yeah, well, I'm glad I didn't because that would have been wrong. Um, I did think he was going to have a big game, and he just didn't. He played all right defensively. I don't, want, I don't think we should overlook that. He had a decent defensive game, but 
what's the point of that? I mean, if you're going to, I don't, you could be the best defensive player in the entire world. And if you're just going to score two points on 20 minutes of play, it's not going to work for me. Even Marcus Smart doesn't do that. Let's get into some of the comments here. Michael Quayle one says Gordon's ankle must be a non-response in the last, uh, he has no explosion and now it's in his head. Yeah. I mean, I think it's mental just as much as it's physical. He said it about a week ago. Like, yeah, it's not a hundred percent yet. If you're seeing that, if you're seeing, if you're seeing him say that his ankle's not physically 100%, then damn, we got a ways to go before he's mentally 100%. Um, title city Boston checks in and says Hayward has to do something more than he's doing. I know, and he's just, uh, he just he just—he looks lost out there. When they were playing against that zone, the Nets were running a zone for a lot of that game. Gordon Hayward was, like, just bouncing around. He just didn't know what he, he didn't even look like he knew what he was doing. It's crazy. Um, CV Darren says Gordon needs to be sent to the Red Claws. That is a very expensive Red Claws player. I'll say that. Um, and so we'll talk about the, uh, we'll talk about, Gordon Hayward trade, and then we'll get into the Anthony Davis situation here. So the Gordon Hayward situation, in terms of trading him, I don't think there's a team out there that would take on any sort of cap from him. And you're not going to be able to. The one thing I've said is, hey, trade him, and you'll get you'll get the uh, fr you'll free the cap room. That isn't how it works. You can't just trade a 31 million dollar guy for I don't know for a five million dollar player, and then you have 26 million dollars of cap space. That isn't how it works. They'd have to equalize the deal somehow um, on the monetary side of things. So you can't just trade Gordon Hayward and free up cap space unless you were to find a team that could absorb a bunch of his cap. The Kings are out there. The Kings have I think 11 million open. That's not going to do it, and nor would they want to do that. Who wants to take on Gordon Hayward's contract right now? Trading him doesn't make sense. And you know, in that article, I don't know if you guys read it. Head over to GuyBostonSports.com. Check it out. It says my. It's uh. It's titled My Message to the Trade Gordon Hayward Celtics Fans. I just say he's a stock that you bought high and now it's dropped to one dollar. If you sell him right now, if you sell Gordon Hayward right now, you're gonna get that one dollar back, sure. What's the point of that? He's already his back's against the wall. Gordon Hayward isn't getting any worse. You might as well hope he returns to that thirty dollar stock that he once was. And you know that he can be, and you know the reason that he tanked. So it's not just like a stock guessing game. You know the exact reason as to why Gordon Hayward has sucked lately. He's been terrible. I think he'll get back there. I hope he gets back there. He hasn't had too, too much time. People are really expecting him 50 games in to be the explosive, almost MVP candidate that he was in Utah. Come on now. Recheck your expectations for him. Um, CV Darren says he's stunting the growth of, growth of Tatum and Brown. I don't know if he is at this point. Like, they're just, they're playing over him and playing better than him right now. I don't know if he's stunting it. I, I, could, I could even see, go as far to say that they're playing, they're playing, Tatum and Brown are kind of alternating and playing so well that Hayward's having a tough time getting the minutes. Um, and uh, let's see. What do we got here? Should the Celtics look at Dragon Bender? I don't know. I mean, he hasn't really been too much since he's been in the league. I'm not sure. I was kind of big on him in the draft, but not too, too much. Um, I don't think they should look into getting Dragon Bender. I don't know, what, I don't know exactly if he would. If he would um, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, but I don't see if Dragon Bender. I don't see him turning into anything incredible. Let's uh, let's turn the tables now. We we talked about the Nets game. Celtics won. Celtics won by eight. They handled the Nets there. D'Angelo Russell's a stud. Um, and let's talk about the Anthony Davis situation. So we'll talk about this just to start because it came out today. Anthony Davis wants to to uh, be traded. He wants to be traded. He made it clear that he's not going to re-sign. Uh, Davis is not re-signing in New Orleans. Shocker there. Uh, at the end of next year is when his when his player option, I believe, is up. And he said today, or it came out today, that he's not re-signing. That's not a shocker. The one shocker is that he's requesting a trade. Now, that kind of... That might move the needle a little bit, because now people are thinking, when he says request a trade, does he think he's going to get traded now, in the offseason, you know, after free agency settles, a.k.a. the Celtics signed Kyrie? Who knows? Um, Gentry came out and said that he thinks Anthony Davis will play. He talked to Anthony Davis, and he thinks he'll play the remainder of the season. But you never know. The right offer comes along, and boom, Anthony Davis is out of New Orleans and headed to the Lakers or something. However, um, you asked for my thoughts on this. I do think that uh, I do think Anthony Davis will play the rest of the season in New Orleans. I think that they're, they would be doing themselves a disservice right? The, the Pelicans would be doing themselves a disservice if they decide to move Anthony Davis without hearing all the options officially. They don't know exactly what Danny Ainge wants. And I saw a couple people on Twitter saying that, well, don't they know what the Celtics can offer? Yeah, th they know exactly what the Celtics can offer. That's a lot different than seeing an official offer on the phone come through and be like, hey, this is what we're offering. Take it or leave it. A lot different. And they don't need to. What's, if, if, 
the Pelicans are going to enter a rebuild after Anthony Davis, get some maybe draft picks, some young talent. What's the difference? What is the difference of a half a year or half a season? Why wouldn't they just wait to hear out all the offers, right? I, it makes sense to me. If I was the GM, I'd be like, okay, I know that LA can offer me something now. I know that the Lakers can offer me something now. Hell, I heard, I heard from someone that the Sixers might try and get in the sweepstakes. But what's the difference? All you're doing, if you're going to jump to the gun, jump the gun on that, all you're doing is excluding some teams, a.k.a. the Celtics, that may be able to offer you something you like come July. And now, if you're not familiar, the Celtics cannot try and trade for Anthony Davis. They can't have Kyrie and Anthony Davis on the same team uh, until Kyrie signs his new deal in July. So the earliest we could even look at officially offering Anthony Davis a con- uh, uh, the Pelicans a trade offer for Anthony Davis would be July 1st after Kyrie signs. Um, let's go. I'll go through the chat here, see what we got here. A lot of people asking, what would I give for Anthony Davis or what should we give up? It's tough. I'm gonna. I'm so on the fence with Tatum, but I'd say give up whatever you can give up. I'd give up to get Kyrie and Anthony Davis to play together. I would give up a lot. I would. I've I've gone. You guys know watching the stream. I've gone so back and forth, so back and forth talking about trading Tatum. I just think Anthony Davis is absurd, absurd. Like he's he's a transcendent player. He's so big, so strong, can do so many things. He's he's hand eye coordination is up there. He does get injured from time to time, but who cares about that? So I would say I'd give up anything. You know, the Pelicans want Tatum. They got Tatum, in my mind. You get Anthony Davis and you get Kyrie Irving playing together, that's the start of a championship team. And, hell, Gordon Hayward comes back to something. I mean, that's a team. That's a team right there. You know, you got to start somewhere, and you have those two guys, and you are looking good. You are. Um, Chill Philly says, are we including Jason in the deal with AD? Yeah, I I, I think I would, but again, you could watch this. You could watch me in a stream a couple games from now, and I would be like, "Nope, not trading Tatum." I, if you if you know me, you know that I absolutely, absolutely go back and forth between wanting to trade Tatum and not wanting to trade Tatum. It kind of depends on how he plays. And tonight he didn't play too too well, so it's like I'm on the trade Tatum train. Not ag- not aggressively seeking out to trade him, but more like, yeah, Anthony Davis is worth it. But I do think I do think more often than not, I'm leaning towards do anything to get Anthony Davis. I do. I think so. Um, let's see in the chat here. Let's get some yeses and nos. Would you trade? Would you include Tatum in the package for Anthony Davis? Um, KJ comes in and says, would the Pelicans take Gordon Hayward for Anthony Davis? I've seen this too. I've seen a few people say, he, Kenny's trolling when he asks this, but people have been out like, no one wants Gordon Hayward right now. I'm sorry. I love Hayward, but no one wants Gordon Hayward right now. He's a 30 plus million dollar guy playing like he's a, you know, it's his last season in the league. It's his veteran minimum deal. That's that's a fact. I just think that uh, I just think that he's he's not there yet. So, Gordon Hayward's not going to get traded. I can't see him getting traded. Why? And this is the last thing Celtics fans should want. Would want. Think of yourself in this situation. You trade Gordon Hayward for nothing. You get a bunch of guys. Whatever it is, you trade him. You send him off just to get rid of him. What if he goes and turns into that superstar? You're not getting anything in value for him. Now, what if you trade him for nothing and he goes and gets and turns into a superstar? How are you going to feel now? It doesn't – It's not gonna, he's not going to hurt you any more than he is right now. And look, at the Celtics are playing well. They almost beat the Warriors. They just beat the Nets, who are a decent team. So, I mean, I'm just not – I'm just not – I just don't see the logic in trading to, in Hayward. It's like, it's like the people that aren't educating themselves – and I'm sorry if I'm offending you here, but the people that aren't educating themselves just see a guy that's sucking on the court and you're like, trade Hayward, trade word. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, D. White, Medic, what's going on, man? He says, how about all those people that were doubting, doubted paying smart this year? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Marcus Smart is a guy, and someone tweeted it to me, and uh, it's a good point. Usually you see a guy get a big payday, and then he kind of just tails off, and you know what, I got my money, a.k.a. Evan Turner. Um... Evan Turner's all right, but you know what I mean. And you see Marcus Smart. It's like he's getting better and better. He's proving he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's like, screw you guys that didn't think I'm worth the money. Look at me now. Marcus Smart's playing like he's worth more than that. I would have paid Marcus Smart a little bit more if I knew he's going to play like this. I would. I would. Um, Title City Boston says, no, she wouldn't trade uh, Tatum for that. No Smart in the deal either. Yeah, I don't think the Celtics – I don't think they sh- – Marcus Smart is the Celtic of this team. Marcus Smart is 1,000% the Celtic of this team. If he goes out the door, this team has no identity for now. 
for now. I do. I, I mean, Marcus Smart is the Celtic on this team. Kyrie Irving, he's not a true Celtic yet. Al Horford, he's a quiet leader. You know what I mean? Marcus Smart is the Celtic. The young guys, none of them have been on the team long enough to be a Celtic yet. Marcus Smart's the Celtic. They cannot trade him. Ty James, 1993, says that the Celtics can beat the Warriors in seven. I think so. I think so. Um, I don't know for sure, though, but I think that they have a good chance. Like, they played some shitty basketball towards the end of that game and only lost by four. So, I don't know. Um, I could see it. Tommy, you're jumping in here saying Brad Stevens has done a better job. Yeah, he has. I know I know you've uh, come at his head a couple times, but Brad Stevens hasn't... Uh, he hasn't been the issue, right? He hasn't been the issue the last few games. There's been times where he's been an issue, but not not this not this time. Not in the most recent history. Um, KJ says, unless the Celtics sign and trade Morris or Rozier, Smart will be in any AD deal to match the money. Um, yeah, I know. Well, I don't know. It's tough. It is tough. I could see if this is going to happen in the offseason, I could see a sign and trade with Morris. I don't know. Morris seems like... Morris doesn't, I don't know if Morris is going to care where he goes. I think he's going to go where he can get some money, but we'll see. Um, but again, I don't think I would want to, this is all hypothetical money out of it almost when I'm talking to Anthony Davis, because obviously you can't just trade Jason Tatum for Anthony Davis either, right? So when I ask, would you trade Jason Tatum for Anthony Davis? That's not actually a physical thing that you can do either. The money's not going to add up. So before we get carried away getting money into it and stuff like that, it's good just to no, if you'd even trade the, the player. Um, I'm seeing a lot of no's for trading Tatum. I mean, Tatum, it's, Tatum still, he's only 20 years old. I'm I'm not cold on Tatum whatsoever. I'm not. But he hasn't met the expectations we wanted. Um, but I think it's because he just set the bar too high last year. I mean, dunking on LeBron in the Eastern Conference Finals to scoring six points against the Brooklyn Nets on a Monday in the 50th game of the year. I don't know. I, that's why I keep going back and forth because Tatum shows flashes. He does. He comes out of nowhere and shows flashes of like, that guy is going to be nuts someday. But then he disappears. But that could be a youth thing. That could be him just being young. You know? Who knows? Um, CV Darren 617 says, I think the Celtics need a big who specializes in rebound. Um, a player like Perk or PJ Brown. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that uh, having Baines, having Baines slowly get even better. Baines had a big night tonight. Baines had 16 off the bench. Um, he made two threes. I think that he's a huge piece of this. I think he definitely, definitely is a uh, is a is a productive player. You know, when they when they had a few bad games, keep in mind it was when Baines is, Baines was out with his hand. So um, I I'm th I'm wondering if they think Robert Williams is the guy that develops into that too. I don't know. Um, Steven 23 Taylor, any chance Kyrie leaves Boston for New York or LA? No, I, I, I can't believe this is coming up again. It's, it's, it wasn't even a legitimate report. Like it didn't, no one said Kyrie's leaving Boston. There was uncertainty that he's staying uncertainty that he's saying, why don't you go back to October? I think it was October. Maybe not, whatever, whenever the day was, no, I don't know, November, when he just says, like, hey, Boston, I'm plan on staying here uh, if you'll have me. And then how about the commercial that aired on, I think, ESPN, it was a Nike commercial with him and his dad, he says, I want to be the the reason that kids out there are wearing number 11, but I want to be the, the last one to wear it in this garden. What part of that says, hey, I might be leaving and might be going to New York, or I might be going to LA? Nothing to me, like, until we hear from the horse's mouth... We didn't know what was happening with Kyrie until he said something. So why are we jumping off that right away? Just because we hear little little rumblings, little bits and pieces, oh, Kyrie might be leaving? No way. No way. If we hear something more so solid, fine, maybe. But if what, what, there's nothing to actually go on. You think it's a legitimate Anthony Davis word for word said, Boston's not my top target because I don't think Kyrie's signing. Come on. Come on. What NBA world do we live in where a player just gives a, a sound bite like that? It's it's not it's not what you think it is. It's taken out of context. Everything like that. Kyrie's staying in Boston. Um, it's 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 just not a fact. You know what I mean? Kyrie Irving. What I know right now is a fact that Kyrie, word for word, said he wants to stay here. That's a fact. Whether he does or doesn't, we will have to see. But right now, I'm taking the facts that I have. I'm not going to take a little, uh, you know, whisper in an ear. That's probably like a telephone quote. You know, someone says, I want a car. And by the end of it, someone's saying, yeah, when are we going to the bar? You don't even know what the correct phrase was at the beginning. So I don't really think, I don't really think 
that uh, Kyrie's leaving. And um, I felt like that since the minute he got here. You know what I mean? I felt like I, everything he wanted, he wanted a young team that he could be the guy on that is a championship ready, um, that has history and everything like that. And guess what? He got it. He got it. He got it wrapped in a bow underneath the Christmas tree. Um, well, actually, I don't know. I think Kyrie said he doesn't. No, he doesn't like Thanksgiving. Um, Tommy says it's fake news. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, we'll see. If if I hear a fact, then I can kind of change my opinion. But I'm not changing it just because I heard rumblings of that. Um, let's see. What do we got here? Steven just says, just a question I've been telling everyone he's saying. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't I'm not, I wasn't saying that you were saying that. I, I saw it all over social media today, too. I saw everyone saying it, that, he, uh, that he's possibly leaving and stuff like that. I know, I know you're just bringing it up as a topic. Um, RC3 all day says, do you think Robert Williams should get more playing time? He's down in Maine right now, or up in Maine, I guess I should say. So he's getting more playing time up there, I guess. Um, I think that that's good for him. So, I mean, he's not going to be at, the, not gonna be at the every Celtics game. Um, but I think it's good that he's going to be, I think he's going to play well on the main red claws. And I think it's also going to just allow him to actually get that playing time. Like you're talking about. I think that that's kind of something that he needs. It's something that, uh, well, I don't know, just benefit him being out there and doing it. You know, he's seen how the NBA works. He's seen it. Now it's time to kind of put that to play right now. Now it's time to get on the court. Some things you can't just practice. AKA being in a game, being in the flow of things. Robert Williams now sees what the NBA is like. And now he can kind of apply that to the to the main red clause and hopefully develop. I think that he, uh, I think that he's able to. Uh, I think he's going to be able to to, to develop. Um, and I'm sure he'll bounce back and forth based on when they have when they have roster spots open. Like a Kyrie doesn't play, um, roster spots open. You know, it depends on active inactives. Um, Title City Boston says yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, Jinx Williams was back with his seeds today. So I mean, it's it's he's not fully ready yet in my mind. He just isn't. Um, but D. White Medic David says uh, Williams is a bright future. He does. He does. But let's not rush him. I don't. Th- I don't know if he needs more playing time because you know, as much as we love the dunks and stuff, as much as we love the dunks, Robert Williams sometimes looks lost out there. Um, all right, guys. A few more questions. Then we're gonna close up. Make sure if you are enjoying the stream, if you want to get more people in the stream, you know, make it a little bit more popular. Help me out. Make sure you're smashing the screen if you're on the phone. Give me some hearts here. If you're on the desktop, make sure you're just hitting the heart in the bottom right corner. Um, if you're on Periscope, there. So uh, yeah, it does me a whole lot of good. Helps everyone uh, get get more contact and um, more uh, people in here and more comments flowing. Um, New Englanders, any Englander says, FYI, NBC Sports uh, Boston said that Kyrie note came from a guy whose source is Rich Paul. We won't, we, I mean, I'm not, I'm not buying into anything until I see it. Thank you guys, you're hammering the hearts right now, that's what I'm talking about. Again, it it does, that that type of thing helps, I hate to just outright ask for them, but it it helps. Um, Take a few more questions, then we're going to jump off, time to hit the hay, Celtics took a W, um, this would have been an entirely different stream if they lost to the Nets. Because not that that Warriors loss was big, but boy, if they lost to the Warriors and then came and lost to the Wins, I don't know. Um, Tommy, when's the next time you will be on? I don't think I'll be doing a stream, at least in the uh, setup here on Wednesday. I might jump on and do a stream, just, you know, the the, the amateur version, I guess, on the phone. Um, might be doing that. I'll definitely put out a video or some sort of content after the win. Um, but yeah, let's let's you know. Now you remind me. I want to kind of kind of go over the next uh, next few games for the Celtics here. Had it up earlier. We'll go over this and then uh, we'll we'll jump in. I do want to say if you are a Patriots fan, make sure you're on the lookout on GuyBostonSports.com. Me, KJ, Sean, we're going to be doing a Super Bowl roundtable podcast preview, and um, yeah, we're going to have a bunch of people from the staff on in and stuff like that, just jumping in and out, giving predictions, giving some takes on the game. So make sure you're following Guy Boston Sports on Twitter, at Guy Boston Sports, and uh, you'll be able to check that out. So now let's go over here. So uh, we got Charlotte, New York, OKC, Cleveland, and then we play LA. That's the next five games, six games or so. Oklahoma City and LA are going to be pretty good games. I think Celtics might win uh, five in a row here. Um, I don't want to get, I'm not going to give any of my mortal locks. I've done that. I'm 3 and 0 this year. 3 and 0 this year, so I'm not going to give any locks out. I might, I don't know. Undecided yet. Um Let's see. Okay, let's do this. 19 says time for 10 in a row. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um but then knowing the Celtics this year, that would be followed by 
eight losses in a row, the inconsistency. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Let's see. Tyler Smith, 5230. Would you give Tatum in a package for AD? We talked about this just a little bit earlier. I'm assuming you weren't in here, but I said I'm probably more on the fence than anyone. I keep going back and forth, back and forth. Right now, I think I would. I think Anthony Davis is just good enough. Like He's one of the few in the league, if not the only one in the league, that I would, <clears throat> that I would give up Tatum for. Um, let's see. Steven 23 Taylor asks any chance anyone beats the Warriors this year. It's going to be tough. They're so good. Adding boogie to the mix is incredible. Incredible. Make sure you guys are pounding the hearts there. It's helping me out here. We already got the questions flowing. Um, KJ's jumping in with the eyes looking to the side. Yep, he'll be on he'll be on the stream for the uh, or the uh, podcast for the Celtics round. No, sorry, the Super Bowl round table. Um, Tommy's got his money on the Celtics. All right, that's a good note to stop off on. Thank you guys for tuning in. Good, good, uh, good episode. Again, this would have been a lot different if they had lost that game, lost two in a row. I would have been back to the city's on fire Celtics fan. Um, but luckily that's not the case. Luckily they were able to take this one home. Um, Brooklyn Mondays, I think that might be the last one. Pretty sure. I think that that was the trilogy. So, uh, we took the dub. We took the win of the series. So, um, we'll catch up with you guys next time. Go seize. I smell a little bit of a wintry coming. <laughs>